This conference will now be recorded. Good evening and welcome to the August 7th, 2024 South by Hall Township Board of Commissioners meeting. I'm going to call this meeting to order. We do have all commissioners present. Um, Commissioner Roth is attending virtually. Commissioner Roth, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Very good. Thank you. At this time, I would ask you all to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to announce that all public sessions of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners are electronically recorded, filed, and posted to the Township website for public access. At this time, I would ask our Township Manager, Tom Petrucci, to please review our public virtual meeting rules. Thank you. The public and virtual meeting rules are as follows. Courtesy of the floor for non-agenda items will be at the beginning and end of the agenda. Public comment will be limited to five minutes per speaker. For all listed agenda items, the board president will call for courtesy of the floor prior to the board of commissioners taking action on that specific agenda item. For in-person attendees, please raise your hand to be recognized, then move to the podium when directed. You will be asked to state your name and address for the record and may then proceed with asking your question. For those participating virtually, please mute your microphone or telephone to avoid any background noise that may cause interference during the meeting. The chat box feature will be active throughout the meeting. If you have a comment or question, Please type your full name and address into the chat box. The staff member monitoring GoToMeeting will then unmute your microphone and you will have the opportunity to comment or ask a question. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'd also like to announce that the Board of Commissioners met in executive session on July 29th and also prior to tonight's meeting to discuss legal and personnel matters. And item D, I would ask us all to please bow our heads for a moment of silence for former South Whitehall Township Public Works employee Dorsey L. Rudder, who passed away on Saturday, July 27th, 2024. Dorsey was employed for over 30 years by the township from February 12th of 1983 to May 31st of 2013 as a public works maintenance assistant. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Agenda item four is courtesy of the floor. This is opportunity for any member of the public to address the board on any non-agenda items. Is there anyone present this evening who would like to address the board? Yes, ma'am, if you please come up to the podium. Good evening, and if you would just give us your name and address for the record. It's Janet Moore, 3815 Broadway. Thank you. <clears throat> And okay, <clears throat> please bear with me. I had an eye emergency today, but I'm here. And I'm here tonight speaking for myself and my neighbors on a ruling passed by the zoning board on April 24th. The ruling was passed allowing relief for a property at 3821 Broadway. It's an undeveloped lot, which you're trying to shoehorn a proposed new home. <clears throat> and the reliefs were as follows. The minimum lot size required is 7,200 feet. They requested 2530 square feet, and it was granted. They requested, they requested one foot along Adams Street, and that minimum yard setback is 10 feet, and they were granted the one foot. The side yard setback is 10 feet, and along the east side of the property, they were granted a two foot setback. The lot size is 20 by 126, and they're putting a 17 by 42 and a half story building there. <clears throat> I would like to also add that the parking pad that they're planning is just minimum dimensions for two vehicles. This would require each vehicle to pull out, back out onto Adams Street. <clears throat> um, those people exiting Court Street, which is the intersecting to Adam, are, um, excuse me, like I said, I have a problem. The vehicles exiting Court Street onto Adams would have their sight reduced by two vehicles on this pad. 
And since there is already safety issues trying to pull out onto Adams Street, because there's also two telephone poles on either side, it's gonna make it more hazardous than it already is. Um, and since there's already safety issues with trying to pull out, oh, I'm sorry. And as you can see on the plot plan, which was handed out to you, oh, here they come. Okay, as you can see on the plot plan, how close they plan to build the house to Adams Street. On the comprehensive township plan, if Adams Street were widened to the, what it's suggested on there, it's gonna make the house be a mere 12 inches from the street way. And if, in addition to that, if, if that were to happen, even the snow plows wouldn't be able to go through. Also, um, how will the contractors build on this tiny lot without with trying to stay within the confines of their, you know, their, their limited access? Um, I'm trying to work through all this. And even when they do build, I don't know about the heavy equipment, but even two feet to the property line on the east side they wouldn't even be able to put ladders on to get up to the house. So, also the other thing that was not addressed by the zoning board was we have a terrible rainwater runoff, which everybody on the east side of Adams Street gets water in either their houses or their yards and putting something there that's gonna make more, you know, cement areas, it's gonna make the water problem worse. So, what I would like to ask the board to review these requests and hopefully reject the zoning board's ruling. Ms. Moore, you finished with your comments? Very good. So, if I understand you correct, this ruling was approved by the zoning board on April the 24th. Four. Is that correct? Um, can you confirm? It looks like the April zoning hearing board was canceled. I think it was reviewed. Um, yeah, correct. July. Oh, 724. I'm sorry. July. July. Correct. So at this point, the Zoning Hearing Board is a quasi-judicial board. So if they've made a ruling. Pardon me? They are a quasi-judicial board. And they have made their ruling, their decision on this. Were you present at the meeting? To, yes. And you spoke? Yes, a lot of us spoke. Tom, at this point, is there any action the board of commissioners um you're still within you're still within the window where a decision has not been uh rendered so you would be within your rights to appeal a decision to the zoning hearing board if, it, if the decision was rendered on july 24th we, we are still within the window you're still within the window so at this point um we thank you for bringing this to our attention we will have our um, internal staff and township manager review this information and let the board know what options we might have um, okay on this matter okay because we're limited on time because they already published the letter last monday four days after the 24th Public. their decision letter what came out yeah we're still within we're still within the, the, the appeal window. We're still within the appeal window. Yeah, we are now. What mm -hmm. is the appeal window? 30 days from the issuance of a decision. Okay, so we've got the remainder of. Yeah, we'll, we'll investigate further and report back to the board commissioner. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you for bringing us. Okay, have a good night. Thank you, you too. Is there anyone else present who would like to address the board this evening? Is there anyone online, Chris, with any public comment? There is not. Okay, very good. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item five, meeting minutes from the July 17th, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting have been distributed for your review. Are there any comments or questions? 
If not, may I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. A sec motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Then to item six, we have a presentation this evening from our interim chief Brown will present for our South Whitehall Township Police Department uh, for badge pin pinning ceremony for a new officer to the township, Officer Jacob D. Warnett. And I'll turn it over to interim chief Brown. Uh, Jacob, you want to come on up? Uh, please introduce Officer Jacob Warnett. He's a graduate of India Hills, Indian Hills High School, New Jersey. He attended York College of Pennsylvania in 2016, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Um, officer Warnett began his law enforcement career as a special class officer one and two with the Holden Police Department in New Jersey, where he worked summers from 2015 until 2019. Jake was then hired by the city of Philadelphia Police Department in 2019. He comes to our department with over five years experience, uh, experience as a certified Act 120 police officer. They're not the easiest things to put on, <laughs> especially when you're wearing a shirt. would please step down we'd like to take a photograph with um, officer Warnett. I want to thank uh, Jacob's family and our township police officers who are in the back of the room tonight for attending and for showing your support. And we welcome you to our community and wish you the best on this next chapter of your life. Moving on to agenda item 7A ordinances. We have an ordinance of the Township of South Whitehall, County of Lehigh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, amending part two, general legislation, chapter 240, parks and recreation of the codified ordinances of South Whitehall Township in its entirety, enforcement of violations, fines and penalties, repealer, failure to enforce, not a waiver, severability and an effective date. And Tom, if you'd please present this agenda item. Thank you. So as um, discussed at the last board meeting, the township officials are receiving complaints and, and are observing uh, the following activities at Cover Bridge Park. So we're seeing loud music played along the banks and in the Jordan Creek, cooking activities and grilling along the banks and in the Jordan Creek, taking township property into the Jordan Creek, placing picnic tables and other objects into the Jordan Creek, littering along the banks of the Jordan Creek and parking vehicles in areas that are not designated for parking. Um, so in response to these issues, the township uh, has put together a draft amendment to chapter 240 of the township code of ordinances, um, which would be a complete revamp of our current parks rules and regulations across all park, uh, park, park properties owned and maintained by the township. 
Um, so the, the ordinance was draft, uh, drafted with the feedback received uh, from members of the public and the governing body, as well as, again, the aforementioned direct observations of the police department and public works personnel in a review of multiple existing regulations from other communities. Um, so the police department, command staff, public works, parks, recreation, management personnel, code enforcement personnel, and co community development personnel all provided their, their comments on the draft ordinance. So I'll go through a summary of the key revised provisions. Um, so essentially this ordinance requires a permit to be obtained for multiple activities. So if you're looking to use the recreational buildings, pavilions and associated grounds, you would need a permit use of athletic fields. Uh, you would need a permit also to reserve any area in the park system for use. The ordinance defines an event assemblage or an activity which 10 or more people are expected to attend um, would require a permit. Um, so it would not be applicable though to individuals and groups that are utilizing the playground facilities at the direct location of the playground facility. Um, also using the park for commercial purpose, purposes would require a permit. For example, trying, trying to sell um, items or, or seminars, things of that nature. And then also it memorializes the special event permits permit process that the township has already implemented um, for 5K runs, 10K runs, examples, uh, birthday parties, company picnics, weddings, et cetera, um, where you would need to obtain a special event permit from the township in order to, to hold those events in a township park. Also, special events in a township park that anticipate attendance of over 1,000 attendees shall submit an emergency action plan to the township for review and approval of the police department, the township manager, and the emergency management director. Director. I would also, this ordinance provides standards for um, the operation of motor vehicles in the park, generally following uh, Title 75, um, provides regulations to protect natural areas, the natural environment, and plant life, and also there's specific provisions on aeronautical activities, alcoholic beverages, amusement and play equipment, animals, birds, and reptiles, audio equipment and use, boating, camping, dogs, pets, and other animals, firearms and weapons, fires, fireworks and explosives, fishing, interference with township personnel, horses, hunting and trapping, illegal drugs and controlled substances, littering, peddling and soliciting, and personal conduct, including disorderly conduct. Um, swimming, bathing, and, and waiting is also um, memorialized in this ordin ordinance, as well as trespassing and vandalism. Other miscellaneous prohibited activities include um, tampering with um, any township equipment, such as drinking fountains or hydrants, gambling in any form, dumping or disposing of waste, garbage, or unwanted material that was not accumulated during use of the park system, um, urinating or defecating anywhere in the park system other than in a restroom or a facility provided for such purposes, engaging in any form of golfing activity except at designated golfing areas, uh, throwing rocks, stones, or other objects from any from any overlook or cliff, failing a bay, to obey a posted park sign, use a, using a skateboard, inline skates, or similar wheeled apparatus or equipment except within in an area designated as a skate park or on paved roadways, camping in the park system unless authorized by the township as part of an official township-directed special event, uh, constructing or occupying any man-made survival 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 shelter, sorry, in the park system, unless part of an official park system program, and then drafting, also drafting water from waterways that run through the park system without obtaining written permission from township manager. Um, consistent with our other regulations, using a tobacco product or electronic cigarette in any form within 50 feet of a recreational field or facility or playground, uh, releasing balloons or sky lanterns within the park system, uh, discharging or otherwise placing or cause to be placed in the waters of any fountain, pond, lake, stream, or other body of water in or adjacent to any park or any tributary stream, storm sewer, or drain flowing into such water, any substance, matter, or thing, liquid or solid, which will result in the pollution or altering of the flow of such waters, placing chairs, picnic tables, tables, or any similar objects in township controlled waters would be prohibited, uh, placing and utilizing grills and griddles or any similar portable cooking equipment shall not be permitted in the township controlled waters. Additionally, grilling and similar items 
uh, would only be permitted in areas that are specified within the park and provided for by the park um, unless as approved as part of a special permit um, or, or a pavilion permit. Um, in addition to the, the revised regulations, the township has also taken some, some short-term actions at the park to, to attempt to mitigate uh, the observed instances of behavior. Um, so we've removed the ro rope swings and the limbs of the trees where the, uh, the rope swings were traditionally attached. We've provided additional staffing, which results in overtime for public works and police department personnel during pre peak time periods. So we've been staffing the park every weekend. Uh, police department personnel have posted an additional duty job posting for Covered Bridge Park. That's their past practice and this will continue. And then we've recently started using public works personnel as well, which we'll implement through uh, the Labor Day weekend at a minimum. We've also extended the parking lot split rail fence in Covered Bridge Park um, to, to extend the, uh, the, the fence all the way to, to where the, uh, the driveway is uh, from the parking lot. We've also uh, placed a permanent bollard um, on the walking path that leads to pavilion number three due to an identified uh, safety issue with cars driving on, on that section getting to the pavilion. Um, we also discussed some other options we can take to address the reported issues. Um, we believe that clear and concise rules and regulations are needed. Uh, it, it, it memorialized within signage in the park. And uh, we believe it should be bilingual uh, signage following the adoptive, do, adoption of any rules and regulations that the board uh, uh, provides for in this ordinance. And we also believe it's appropriate to increase the pavilion rental fee for non-residents from $150 to $300. This would need to be into incorporated, would need to be incorporated into a schedule of fees uh, revision, which is, must be done by resolution and approved by the governing body. So for reference, the current rate for non-residents is 85 and the current rate I'm sorry, the current rate for residents is 85 and the current rate for non-residents is 150. So following any direction um, or discussion that we have here this evening, um, there would be three motions which we would seek for approval. So number one would be to incorporate any visions, revisions to the draft amendment if, if the board identifies any, any uh, necessary revisions as applicable. And then two would be to send the draft uh, amendment to the township solicitor for review. And then three uh, would be to motion to advertise the amendment for adoption following receipt of and incorporation of all township solicitor comments, provided that the comments of this township solicitor do not substantively alter the intent of the revised rules and regulations. Um, thank you for reviewing that memo with us um, and also thank you for drafting this ordinance um, as the township seeks to implement consistent policy and policies and regulations um, to protect our parks, our natural resources, and keep them a safe and enjoyable place for our residents and visitors. Um, one question that I had when I reviewed this, um, I know that at times we have and the park has been closed and the gates have been closed when there's been a weather event. Um, there have been visitors that have not adhered to the park closed signs. Um, do we need to add any language to this ordinance that would include the ability to enforce when the park is closed in those types of incidents? I, th I think it's covered in the catch-all um, for you know, not obeying any, any township directive. But I can add a provision to uh, to make that more clear. So I can add that language very easily. I think given the flooding that we've had at that park historically, I've, I've noted um, visitors there when the flooding was at its highest and I'm concerned for the safety of our visitors. Yeah, at that point, it would be considered trespassing since uh, since the park is closed. But I, I, can, uh, I can confirm that okay. in the language. Very good. Thank you. I will open it up to the board. Are there any questions or comments? I do have a few questions or rather clarifications. Um, I was looking at section 240-4. Um, the hours are from sunrise to sunset. Um, I was comparing it to the old ordinance, which was open to 24-hour fishing. So now anyone doing that activity, fishing, do they also follow the dawn to dusk rules? Uh, no, fish, fishing is still permitted, um, but you have to have an appropriate license. So, okay. so um, as long as you're following 
the Fish and Boat Code and the rules and regulations of the Fish and Boat Commission, the intent was to allow us to allow, allow that activity. Okay. And I can confirm that in the fishing section. Okay, good enough. Um, my second question is um, motorized vehicles 240-6. Um, this, this would include an e-bike, is that correct? Uh, it, it would include anything that would be subject to Title 75. So, um, Interim Chief Brown, is that does an e-bike follow follow that guideline? It would depend on the size of the bike. Um, usually, it's a the decoration between a a pedicycle and a uh, moped type vehicle. It has to meet the requirements of certain CCs, but it, with a, an electric uh, with an electric motor, <clears throat> it's a little bit different. So right now there's no clarity in Title 75 on that issue, um, which would make it hard to enforce. So th those electric bikes you're going to get that you put the, the brand in for, those would be allowed in the park, something similar to what you were looking at? That's correct. And just to be clear, we're not seeing a problem currently with e-bikes. And my next question was, this is all within the park. Um, what happens when that greenway opens? Will there be any restrictions for those electric vehicles on the greenway? Uh, we can we can evaluate whether we whether that needs to be an issue. I mean, we can that we we do have a speed limit essentially or but how do, the question becomes how do you how do you enforce it right so i think what we would do in that case is see if people are um you know engaging in behavior that's inappropriate for the trail and then probably tailor regulation specific to e-bikes um but in speaking with the police department it, it is very difficult to um enforce a speed limit on a trail um it's 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 not practical or, or feasible. So we'd have to look in, at it a different direction in terms of if it's causing a safety issue in some way. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I, I just, I think of, um, you know, on boardwalks, the e-bikes can sometimes terrorize pedestrians that are just walking on a boardwalk and just didn't want something to get out of hand with that as well, because they're becoming really popular question stems from it would, would it make sense to just kind of have a I, we can look at maybe address it, again you know I don't know that we can approach it from a speed limit aspect but I can I can see how we can address it so that it's not creating a problem for people that are just walking or running or biking at a normal speed on the trail is that something the board would like you would like to see that incorporated Yeah, as long I mean, e-bikes. I can see people riding their bike, then going on the riding through the park on an e-bike, using an e-bike to get there, and then going through the park. I understand what she's saying about terrorizing people, especially on the boardwalk to the to the west end, right, where we have that long boardwalk where it's unlimited access. But <laughs> tricky wording of not discouraging it, but making sure that the pedestrians are. We can come up with some wording. Yes, I'm I'm confident that we can come up with the wording to address that specific situation. Um, I mentioned earlier, talk to you about the I and J are are similar. Do you have the wording for J? I, I do. Under fires. So for fires, no person shall set or cause to be set on fire any tree, woodland, brush, grassland, or meadow. Set or cause to be set on fire any material item or property within the park system which is not intended for such purposes. To build any fire except within township-owned fireplaces, metal grills, or approved public fire rings using appropriate materials. Uh, to use a personally owned grill or any similar portable cooking equipment within the park system unless the use of a personally owned grill or any similar portable cook cooking equipment was authorized as part of an approved permit uh, to drum, dump, sorry, dump, drop, throw, or otherwise scatter lit lighted matches, ashes, burning cigars, cigarettes, tobacco paper, or other flammable material. 
and to leave a fire unattended at any time or not fully extinguished before being abandoned within, within the park system. So if, if somebody has a permit for an overnight camp like Boy Scouts, let's say if they want to do a campfire, it has to be approved in there. That has to be mentioned in their permit and then approved by you. That is correct. Safety. And that, that's the standard we follow right now. It's just this is memorializing that. Um, I did hear you mentioned about cooking on something. Did you say something provided by the township? So would there be certain picnic tables that have a permanently installed grill that they could use? So not, not, not picnic tables, but just grills near adjacent to picnic tables. Right, but we will have some there. We do have some, and we discussed adding more. Okay, so my concern with that is, and, and other places do, and how we're going to deal with it is the is the charcoals. So what are they going? Are they going to be told just to leave the charcoal in the grill and then clean up by Public Works? That, that's how we do it now. Some people, I mean, I don't. Do you ever see people cleaning them, it themselves, Herb? Or attempting to if they use the pavilion grills they do just leave it in and then we clean them out yeah i, I don't think we ever yeah I, I understand your concern that they'd be trying to haul burning embers and yeah yeah the other thing um waiting within 100 feet of the, the especially the downside part of the dam uh i'm not a fisherman i know they wade closer to that is that yeah that's a, a state law they're not supposed to be doing that Okay. Do we, do we, are we responsible or is that a fishing game? A fishing boat commission. So they would have to call and fishing boat and have them come out and do whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing I had is about um, tubing. As I mentioned last meeting, right, I know this guy used to like to tube down the Jordan when the water was appropriate. And I understand wearing your PFD, but according to what we're saying now, that would be a prohibited activity. Right. If you didn't have a permit for the tube, so if you have a kayak, you're, you're issued a permit for that kayak, but the tube, you wouldn't be able to. So if I wanted to go tubing or this guy wanted to go tubing, he'd have to come get a permit before he went tubing? The way it's written now. Because the, the, the issue becomes, what if 100 people want to go tubing at the same time? And that's when it becomes a problem. One, one person tubing is not a problem, of course. But, but the issues we're seeing is, is if we have a large volume of people tubing or in the water at the same time, that's what we're trying to address. address. Well, it's really a safety issue then. We don't have the ability to monitor. No, we don't. We don't yeah, we don't have lifeguards. We don't have, it's it's swimming and or wading and in the creek at your own risk. Correct. But if you have a permit, I mean, a kayaker could go down the uh the creek if the water was high enough any other comments from the board jacob i, I don't do know if you have of, yeah can you hear me yes <clears throat> yeah i just have a couple of comments um i i think for me i'm i'm good with the with the ordinance in its current form uh tom i want to thank you uh, and all the, the staff who worked on this. Um, it's been a pretty efficient turnaround uh, from sort of the, the peak of of uh, residents making us aware of, of this issue. Um, so I, I want to thank you and staff for, for your responsiveness and, and sort of putting this all together. I think I think overall these changes are going to be a, a net positive um, for the, the quality of, of life in the neighborhood and in the park down there. Um, so I, I think you know, this, this gives a lot of good, good tools to our officers to enforce. Uh, and like I, I said at our last meeting, um, once it's sort of well advertised in the park, uh, we're, we're in the later part of this season now, but especially for, for next season, I think it'll, I think it'll uh, provide a lot of, a lot of benefits and, and solve a lot of the issues. Uh, the only other thing uh, that was brought up by one of the neighbors at the last meeting, um, and this, I don't think this would necessarily fall into the ordinance, um, because it's park specific, but I know we have gates on the playground side of the park, uh, preventing uh, cars from from going into the parking lot, you know, late at night. Um, but we don't have gates on the other side, and I know that that neighbor complained about cars sort of driving into that part of the 
parking lot late at night. I don't know if that's something public works is considered or, or we, we could consider um, just making sure that, you know, at night when the park is closed, the, the parking lots are closed. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've been doing that actually. We have um, gates at each parking lot. Fantastic. And yeah. they're, they are both, they're, I'm assuming they're both locked. Uh, yes. I haven't been down there in a few days, but I, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, going back to the in, in raft issue, um, it, we probably could make it so, you know, there's a, a reasonable use of it. Um, if you would like the board, you know, the board's inclined, I could, we could come up with some language to address that. So we're not telling people you can never be in there. Well, I, I just see it as it's a you know, group of people, five, 10 people say, hey, let's, the water's up, let's go for a tube ride down the Jordan. Yeah, okay, right? So they tube down the Jordan and they get to the dam and they're like, uh, you, you need a permit for that. I just, I understand what you're saying. If some, you know, if somebody had, if you write it that if, if a group larger than X amount is gonna go tubing down the Jordan, I understand the safety issues with yeah. that. But at the same time, you have you know a group of people who who on a on a day want to go down and have some you know family bonding or whatever you know. Yeah, I think we could write something that addresses that specific type of situation, if if the board's inclined for that. I would be inclined. Is the board in agreement? Yes. Jacob, are you in agreement with? Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Are there any other board comments? Is there anybody present that has any public comment on this ordinance? Is there anyone online that has any comments or questions? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I do. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dan Booker. I live at 4101 River Road, and I have a property at 4109 River Road. And uh, speaking on behalf of uh, another, uh, a neighbor, uh, Nick Pistowski, who's also on River Road. Um, number one, I want to thank uh, the board and uh, Tom Petucci for putting this uh, together, getting these uh, revised um, rules and regulations together. It does sound like um, uh, a number of the concerns that I had and uh, the rest of my neighbors uh, seem to be addressed. Um, a couple of uh, comments. Um, I've been kind of dealing with this problem down in the park for the last number of years, five plus years, um, made a number of complaints to the police department and the police were unable to enforce anything. It sounds like now they're gonna be able to enforce the, the regulations uh, with, uh, with warnings and uh, citations. Um, the, this last week, it, things were great when the signs went up about two weeks ago. Um, the noise in the park, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the gathering of people uh, in the creek uh, went down uh, this last week uh, on Sunday. Um, people were uh, uh, walking right past the signs, setting up tents in the uh, creek, uh, building little dams across the, uh, uh, the dam of the water so they could swim in a little bit deeper water, uh, still diving off the roots of the trees at the rope swing. It, they just ignored uh, uh, the, uh, the signage that was up there. Uh, just want to be sure that when the, the signage goes up, that uh, the uh, the police will enforce those regulations. Can you yes, hear me? That's the intent of the that's the intent of the ordinance. Um, right now, okay. we've been t informing and, them of that, and we've been leaving. And again, the the biggest uh, complaint that I have because I'm I'm right above I'm I'm right behind the lime kiln, which is right right in front of where these the swimming seems to be gathering. I mean, of all the places in the park, it's like uh, every every night uh, it, it's there. Uh, people, the Greenway goes right past there. I, I went down uh, the other night uh, before I called the police and people walking by are wondering what in the heck kind of a party's going on down in the creek because of the loud music and the screaming and the yelling and uh, just the, the, the stuff I've been complaining about for years. Um, I'm hoping that that situation is going to be addressed with the loud noise. I mean, my home is, 300, 400 feet away, and it's clear as day on my back porch uh, when they start uh, playing their boom boxes down there. So um, I just want to be sure that there's enough in that uh, revised rules and regulations that the noise from the park, like in any any other neighbor, 
and according to the noise ordinance, stays on their property. Uh, I'm a, a par I'm a neighbor to the park, and the park's my neighbor. And I just expect that kind of uh, consideration. That's all I have to comment on. Very good. Thank you for sharing your observations as a neighbor to the park uh, with this board, and we have taken note of your um, comments. Thank you. Is there anyone else online who would like to comment on this agenda item? No. Okay. Um, so, Tom, based on the comments from the board as well as this resident, you have further? No, I, I can articulate the motions if, if the board would like. Sure. All right. So the first motion would be to incorporate the following revisions. So to add language confirming that the car closure of the park, entering the park after it's closed during um, the emergency closures or other closures is a, va is a violation um, that would, would constitute trespassing. To confirm that fishing is permitted after hours, we're, we're also going to um, add language to address e-bikes um, where it is interfering with pedestrians and uh, the multi-use trail. And um, we're going to add language for tubing to allow for small groups to, uh, to utilize uh, tubes and other similar type um, items. Will those groups for the tubing need permits? No. No. Okay. No. Very good. That would be the first motion. Very good. There's a motion on the floor. Do we have? Um, no, I'm sorry. Did, I was just articulating. Someone then would have to make the motion. Okay. Yeah. Make motion. Does someone <laughs> make that motion? That I'll make the motion. I'll second. All for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Okay. So the second motion would be to send the draft ordinance to the township solicitor for legal review after those revisions are incorporated. Does, uh, do I have a motion? I make the motion. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Finally, um, the motion would be to advertise ordinance, the ordinance provided that uh, the solicitor's comments do not substantially alter the intent of the ordinance. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And item 7B, we have an ordinance amending chapter 336 vehicles and traffic of the codified ordinances of the Township of South Whitehall to provide for an additional parking zone for persons with disabilities and disabled veterans and to provide for severability, retention of rights to enforce repealer and an effective date. And Tom, if you'd please present. Thank you. A township administration is respectfully asking to amend the code to allow for uh, two parking spaces at the Westwood Heights Swim Club, which is located at 1144 North 38th Street. Um, the reason for this request is to allow handicapped members easier access to the facility. There's currently no access for handicapped members. Uh, we've provided a map where those signs would be installed. Um, we have the signage in stock. Um, and the approval was previously received from the Board of Commissioners um, to move forward with advertising the ordinance. It was advertised in the July 10th issue of the Parkland Press and sent to the Lehigh County Department of Law on July 5th. It's now ready for adoption. Um, if the board is, is okay with everything, uh, you would, we would seek a motion to adopt um, the ordinance at this time. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Are there any board comments or questions? Is there any public comment? Is there anything online, Chris? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to adopt said ordinance amending chapter 336, article four, handicapped parking space? We have a motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. And item 7C, an ordinance of the Township of South Whitehall, County of Lehigh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, amending park to general legislation, chapter 304, streets and sidewalks, to add a new Article 5 entitled Snow, Ice, and Sleet Removal to the codified ordinances of South Whitehall Township, and further providing for removal of snow, ice, and sleet from sidewalks, restricting the depositing of snow, enforcement and violations, violation ticket appeals process, fines and penalties, providing for the removal from the codified ordinances of chapter 148 conduct, section 148-1A5, Chapter 155, Drug Paraphernalia, in its entirety, 
and then chapter 221, loitering in its entirety, repealer, failure to enforce, not a waiver, severability, and effective date. Um, if you'd present. Thank you. Uh, so it was previously discovered that the Code of Ordinances of the Township does not include a specific standalone ordinance that addresses the timely removal of snow and ice from the sidewalks located in the township. Um, so in order to address that, as previously discussed with the board, we, a uh, standalone ordinance was developed and was sent to the uh, township solicitor for review. This, the township solicitor had comments. Those, those comments were incorporated. Um, to summarize the key provisions of this ordinance, um, so uh, the purposes and, and, and intent is that we want to ensure that snow, ice, and sleet does not create a hazardous condition for the traveling public. Uh, requires snow and ice to be removed no later than 24 hours after the cessation of the snowstorm or weather event, which causes the buildup of snow or ice on the sidewalk. Um, we didn't provide a specific date range, uh, for example, like like you know uh, December to April, because there's times when there could be snow or ice outside of that. Um, Snow and or ice shall be removed from the sidewalk for the entire width and the entire length of the sidewalk on or fronting the property. Requires the use of melting or, or attraction agent in those instances when snow is compacted and created a uh, slippery icy surface. Requires fire hydrants to be clear of snow. Requires ADA ramps, sidewalks, and Atlanta bus stops to be clear of snow. Prohibits snow and ice from being thrown on public streets. It prohibits snow and ice accumulation to block stormwater drainage systems. Provides for an enforcement process, including uh, tickets and, and an appeal process. And um, we also took, cleaned up a um, part of the code that uh, related to depositing of snow and ice, which is now addressed in this new ordinance. And uh, we removed two parts of the code not related to snow and ice uh, for loitering and drug paraphernalia as no, those are no longer used by the police department. Uh, they use state regulations for those. Um, the solicitor did review and um, the comments that were taken and incorporated was again specified removal of a specific date range. Uh, the code enforcement officer can now issue tickets without previous warnings under this current language clarifies that the first violation is $50 and any subsequent offense is $100 with a $10 penalty if the ticket is not paid or appealed within a specified period of 10 days. Um, and it clarifies that those persons and entities that have been issued a ticket have 20 days to pay the ticket in order to avoid the filing of a citation. So provided the Board of Commissioners is, is in agreement with uh, the language of the ordinance, um, I would seek a motion to advertise it as submitted and and uh to be clarified we will provide literature uh in the form of of uh informational graphics and so forth in the next uh e-newsletter and put it on the township website um so that people are aware of this provision before before the uh, snow season very good Tom. thank you um one question i have thank you for the notice to residents through the newsletter and the township website. I would also ask if it's possible to utilize our utility bills to notify. Not everyone has email and access to the website. I've heard that from a number of residents and if there's a way that we could incorporate that. Yes, um, we could try to get the, uh, the first quarter of 25. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'll open up to the board for questions on the draft ordinance. I do have a quick comment. Um, I want to thank you, Commissioner Kelly, for um, bringing up the fact that not everybody has the email access. So putting it into a, a bill, I completely agree with that. Thank you for that. Um, also, I'm looking at um, 304-46E. Each day a violation continues or is permitted to continue may con constitute a separate offense. Does that mean that every day that the removal is not implemented, they could incur a fine every day? Yes. Thank you. Would we, would the township um, have uh, a list of organizations that could help uh, the elderly or 
somebody has a knee replacement, can't get out to shovel the snow or something that could possibly do it as a public service to a residents? We, we could try to get the information on that. I don't know what that is. I'm not, I don't. Yeah. I'm all I'm thinking of, you know, a person can't clear his snow because he had surgery or whatever, can't get out to do it within a time frame. You know, is there a way for them to seek, you know, call up say, hey, you can't get it, you can't get it done. You know? I'm not aware of any NC. I can find out. Um, I don't know. Chief, could, Chief or, Brown, do you well, know of any entity that would assist? We'll have to look into it. Um, typically, if we've run into those situations, somebody has taken care of it, either a neighbor or um, police right, officers so before, have shoveled it before. Right, yeah. So before we go out and, and start finding somebody who's physically incapable of doing it, could we help them somehow, whether it's asking a neighbor or we find them? I mean, typically our code enforcement officer's approach is to try to, try to work through it without issuing tickets. Um, so I, I would imagine we could follow that process here uh, to the maximum extent possible. That's a good question. And just as a follow up, so would you envision if there was a complaint at a particular home, the code enforcement officer would knock on the door, see if someone's home and if there is an issue, would certainly work with the resident? That would be our, our goal. That would be the goal. That would be the goal. Um, you know, we, we're not. I would envision a warning system. You know, um, you don't have to go straight to a ticket. I think that would make sense. Mm -hmm. I agree with Chris, but the, my concern is the fire hydrants. Some of these people aren't going to clean. I think Herb, you say public works that's not part of your process, correct? No, it is not part of our process. It is technically for the homeowner to clear the fire hydrants, yes. Okay. I know the one big storm, we did go around with a backhoe after we had everything cleaned up. Right. We didn't unbury every single one, but we made sure there was ones in certain vicinities that were cleaned out. So that language is included in this draft ordinance that the property owner is responsible? Yes, yes, it is for fire in hydrants. Hydrant, if it's in their right of way. Yes, and we for for the question about you know uh, organizations, we can certainly try to find that. I just I off off the cuff, I am not aware of any. But we can we can research it further. Queen team. <laughs> is that is that a real thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. Okay. Yeah, Valentine, the Queen team, I think. Chief now, Brown, I, I've seen them in other areas too, outside of Valentine. I used to call from Magistrate Hammond every once in a while. If somebody has public service hours they have to do, does he still do that? Do you know off the top of your head? I know there are um, sometimes he does use that as a uh, as a punishment or uh, public service. Yeah, activity. public service, but yeah, instead of a fine. But yes, I can check in with him again. Commissioner Johns mentioned the clean team. I believe those are residents of the Allentown Rescue Mission. Oh, yeah. And residents can hire them to come out and take care of chores around the home. I believe is how that works. I think that's. I think you're right, Joe. Any other board comments? Is there any public comment on this agenda item? Is there anything online? Do I have a motion? to proceed with advertising of said ordinance amending part two, chapter 304. Motion. Motion to second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Roth, can you hear us? Uh, yes, yeah. can you hear me? Yes. We're, we have a motion and a second to proceed with advertising said ordinance for the snow removal. Can you hear me? You able, yes. Are you able to vote? Y yes. Aye. Aye. Very good. Motion carries five to zero. Do I need a second motion for? No. Legal review. Okay. Good legal review has already been done. Good. Very good. Um, agenda item 8A, we have a resolution granting final approval to a major plan entitled Ridge Farms Phase 1C. 
And I'll turn it over to our long range planner, Chris Stroller. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. This is an application to develop the property located at pin number 5487-464-22139, located directly west of the Buckman Street, Roosevelt Street intersection, and directly north and northwest of the Kinesith Israel Cemetery. The plan proposes 34 two-unit dwellings, 17 pairs of twins, Granary Lane, Gristmill Lane, and a continuation of Buckman Street, active open space number five and basins number eight and nine, and associated stormwater management facilities on an approximately 6.8 acre portion of the 123 acre tract. The property is zoned R4 medium density residential and T&D residential cluster overlay district and is being developed as a T&D residential cluster overlay. K. Walbert LLC is the equitable owner and applicant, and I believe the applicant is here tonight. Um, as an overview, uh, previous consideration for this at the October 21st, 2021 meeting of the Planning Commission, uh, the Planning Commission reviewed and recommended conditional preliminary, preliminary plan approval of the major plan for Ridge Farms. At the November 3rd, 2021 meeting, the Board of Commissioners approved preliminary plan approval for the major plan of Ridge Farm. And at the December 22nd, uh, December 15th, 2022 meeting, the Planning Commission reviewed and took under advisement major plan 2017-101 Ridge Farm phase 1C, which we are talking about tonight. The Planning Commission's action at the June 13th, 2024 Planning Commission meeting, Ridge Farm Phase 1C was recommended for approval subject to 30 conditions. These conditions have been incorporated into the draft approving resolution. During the June 13th, 2024 meeting, concerns were raised regarding the configuration of the continuation of Buckman Street to connect the proposed development to the existing street network. Specific concerns included proposed configuration of two indented parking spaces for the adjacent property owner was not permitted by zoning and would require relief. And the second consideration was lack of pedestrian connectivity to the existing street network. An agreement between the applicant and the adjacent property owner included on-street parking for a minimum of two vehicles along the Buckman Street frontage. The improvements as stated in the agreement are subject to the review and approval by South Whitehall Township. Understanding the rationale for the request, the Planning Commission recommended revisions to the plan presented at the Planning Commission meeting. The Planning Commission recommendation has been memorialized in the following condition, that the applicant shall, to the satisfaction of the township engineer and staff, modify the design of Buckman Street between the Roosevelt Street intersection and the intersection with Cottage Lane, Grismill Lane, to remove the indented parking, improve traffic flow, provide sidewalk, and make recommendations for no parking signage. The applicant has proposed an alternative configuration, as you can see below, for the township engineer and staff to review. The above plan was distributed to Public Works, Fire Marshal, Zoning Officer, and the township engineer. The above plan and attached exhibits have, all, have addressed all concerns other than the waiver for sidewalk width and minor comments from the township engineer that you can see in the waiver and deferral section. While these questions and concerns are typically handled at the Planning Commission prior to final plan approval at the Board of Commissioners, the Planning Commission explicitly directed the applicant to work with the township engineer and staff to modify the design. Township staff and engineer find the proposed configuration acceptable. With the approval of Buckman Street waiver, the condition shall be considered satisfied. So tonight, the recommendation to the Board of Commissioners with the inclusion of the conditions addressing township staff and engineer concerns and the draft approving resolution, staff has no objection to the final approval of Ridge Farms Phase 1C. The following actions are for the Board of Commissioners consideration and are reflected in the attached resolution. So there are three actions this evening. The first being a motion approving a waiver of saldo section 31235B3D to allow for four foot sidewalks along Buckman Street. Second action would be a motion approving a waiver of streets and sidewalk ordinances, section 30427, to allow for a permit to be issued for the road opening of a portion of Roosevelt, Dawes, Buckman, and North Filbert Streets. And then finally, the adoption of the approving resolution. The Board of Commissioners has until August 29th of 2024 to act upon this plan. I will allow the applicant, if they'd like to make a presentation um, to the board to come up and I'll quickly go over the 
two waivers for consideration. The first waiver is the Buckman Street extension waiver. As mentioned in the Township Engineer's letter dated July 29th in 2024, the following waivers are required for the proposed configuration of the Buckman Street extension. Saldo section 312, 35B, 3D, requirement of a local street to be in accordance with township standard construction documents, a five foot six inch grass strip between curb and sidewalk and a five foot sidewalk. We note that the current plan shows no grass strip between curb and sidewalk and a four foot sidewalk on only the south side of Buckman Street. It is the township staff and engineers opinion that granting, the, that granting of this waiver is appropriate to accomplish the planning commission condition to provide sidewalk and due to the limited width of right of way. The four foot width of the, wide of the sidewalk meets ADA requirements for sidewalk width. The second waiver to consider is the waiver of uh, portions of Roosevelt Street, Dahl Street, Buckman Street, and North Filbert Street. A waiver from Streets and Sidewalks Ordinance Chapter 304, Article 3, Street Excavations, Sections 304.27a, Restrictions and Opening a New Street is requested by the applicant to allow a permit to be issued by the township, which would allow an opening in a portion of Roosevelt, Dawes, Buckman, and North Filbert streets, which have been paved within the past five years. The comments from uh, Community Development Department, the waiver is subject to BOC approval because it is not part of subdivision and land development or zoning ordinances. The Department of Public Works recommendations should be followed and there are comments in your packet. If the applicant would like to make a presentation and the board can uh, take action on the initial waivers and then ultimately the resolution. Very good, thank you. Before the applicant uh, makes any presentation, I would like to ask our township engineer, Tony Talarida, to update the board on any engineering comments you have on this plan and the waivers. Thank you. Uh, a lot of information there. It was a uh, Thoroughly reviewed project. Uh, the development itself, 34 units, as was mentioned, was reviewed and approved in preliminary plan before. It was thoroughly reviewed by the Planning Commission. Now, this Buckman Street was under a lot of scrutiny. I think that what Township staff and our office came up with is they're providing sidewalk to leave the development. So, any kids, 34 units, any kids that have to go to the bus stop, which is on the uh, on Buckman Street on the east side of Roosevelt, they are provided sidewalk. Um, there was a 40 foot right away that was granted. That was uh, an agreement between a few property owners since that was an unopened alley. So our office and staff did the best they can to get everything um, per ordinance. Uh, the applicant provided everything except for the sidewalk width. They just couldn't do it based upon the existing conditions. There's some trees, there's some grading necessary on the property owners adjacent to that. They provided a four foot sidewalk, which does meet ADA. So uh, while it doesn't meet the township standards, it's a one foot difference. I think at this point we can recommend that waiver. Uh, the second waiver can kind of defer to her, but it has to do with since there was just pavement, they just paved uh, Bookman Street. They agreed, the applicant agreed to when they cut open the trench to pave edge to edge, to top it edge to edge, which doesn't create a seam, which kind of um, keeps the integrity of the road longer. So I guess based upon some of Herb's comments and that agreement, we have no objection either. So at this point, our recommendation, we, we can recommend engineer approval based upon the minimal comments that we have left. Very good, thank you. And I'll also ask our township solicitor, attorney Zader, do you have any legal comments for the board? I have no legal concerns with the application or the potential approval by the board. Very good, thank you. At You're this welcome. time, I'll open it up to the board if there are questions. I don't know if we need to hear a presentation if the board would like to hear from the applicant. Yeah, I just, the concern with the sidewalks is uh, on the south side of Bookman, there's gonna be no parking signs if I yes. read that correct. So the kids are walking by there and there's no way to put a two foot buffer between the curb and the sidewalk to at least give them some protection in case of an errant vehicle? Uh, we would love to. I think that uh, if you do the math there, it's two 11 foot lanes plus eight feet, that's uh, 30 feet um, on the one side. Then you add in the four foot sidewalk, there's only two to three feet. 
Uh, we tried to widen it. They actually go to a five foot sidewalk near the stop bar. And the reason for that is because they want to get that stop sign out of the cartway. So they're really squeezed. And we did look through the grading plan. I think you can see um, it, they're dealing with a higher elevation of a property on the north side and a lower on the south side. So while we, uh, we tried, um, the engineers went back and forth as good as they could. You can see that I think there's only one foot from the face of curb to the northern property line, and I think two uh, on the south side to the right of way. It's only a 40 foot right of way that was granted by those two property owners. We understand your concerns. Um, there's a curb there to block uh, in addition to the four foot sidewalk. And realistically, that is, we don't foresee that being as fast. Uh, a fast section of road. It's, it's 200 feet. Yeah, it's not that. It's somebody has a medical emergency, hits the gas instead of brakes, and bad things happen. 100. percent No, I oh, agree I, with you. We did our. We, okay, you know, was, that's fine. The other thing I was looking through on the traffic, and it said about how it goes to the from Huckleberry to 22 and all other stuff. But my concern is going out Filbert onto Huckleberry and the sight triangle there um, to see traffic coming east on Huckleberry, and as they try to pull out to go up Huckleberry to avoid as much of Cedar Crest as they can. Is there, did you look at that or? Um, in terms of all site improvements for that site triangle, uh, I believe there's a lot of, uh, a lot of verbiage in the MPC that it's hard to get developers to fix problems off site. Um, I, Joe can talk to that, but I think that would be an off site improvement um, their traffic generation for this part of the development, while I know that there's a large development, the traffic generation doesn't meet any criteria for off-site improvements to any of the surrounding areas, unfortunately. Thanks. So I have a question about paving, and maybe the applicant can answer my question. Um, when you, when those utilities and easements are constructed, what is the time frame that you will perform the paving? It's all finished. Is there a certain time frame that you will perform that paving? Does that make sense? Am I making sense? I just don't want it to drag on for years and years and it's not being paved, it's not being paved. What is your plan for that, for finishing that road? The, the utilities will have to go in early on in the, in the process. Right. So, you know, we'll meet the township ordinance requirements and we'll work with Herb on that. I don't know if Herb, is, is there a specific time frame for paving? I, I kind of have a relic recollection if it was a timeline. Uh, there, there's not, there is a timeline. I don't remember it right off the top of my head how long it is, but there is certain times that they have to deal with temperatures and stuff like that also. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when there's an existing road, when you're, when you're, um, you, you know, excavating into an, an existing road, the time period is 120 days. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Commissioner Roth, do you have any questions? Uh, nothing beyond what's already been asked and answered. Very good. Are there any public comments? Is there anyone online who would like to comment on this agenda item? Not that I'm seeing. Very good. One last ask of the board if there are any further comments before I call. Tony, everything meets ADA approval, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, they have their condition. We're going to get final plans, but before it gets recorded, it will meet ADA. Okay. That's my concern. Very good. So we have three motions to consider this evening. The first is the motion to grant the sidewalk waiver. Do I have a motion? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. We have a motion to grant the road opening. Do I have a motion? Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. I need a motion to adopt said resolution granting preliminary final approval to plan Ridge Farm Phase 1C. I'll make a motion. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Very thank good. you. Good luck with your plan. And I want to thank Township staff for working on those outside um, issues with that the Planning Commission sent over. Thank you for doing that. And item 8B, we have a resolution granting preliminary final approval to a major plan entitled Parkland Operations Center. And I'll again ask Chris Stroller, Long Range Planner, to please present. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. This is an application to further develop the property at 2619 Stadium Drive. The plan proposes a 12,832 square foot addition to the second floor of the new Operations Center building on the 8.7 acre parcel. The property is served by public water and is zoned rural residential too. Parkland School District is the owner and applicant. Previous township consideration at the February 28, 2024 hearing, the zoning hearing board granted a 100 space variance to the off street parking requirement with four conditions through appeal number 202300-07. At the April 19, 2023 meeting, the board of commissioners through resolution 2023-56 approved Parkland School District new operations center major plan an application proposing to raise the existing structure and construct a two story building on the parcel. At the June 13th, 2024, the Planning Commission recommended final plan approval subject to 11 conditions, which are in your packet. Um, the Planning Commission determined that nine waivers were appropriate and two deferrals would be appropriate. Two deferrals are as follows. The applicant has requested requirement of section 312.26a of the subdivision land development ordinance require Indication of the plan and construction of all required public improvements along the frontage of Lime Kiln Road to be waived, and the Planning Commission is persuaded that a deferral would be appropriate until such time that the Board of Commissioners deem the improvements necessary. The second waiver is the applicant has requested the requirement of Section 31235B of Saldo pertaining to the requirement to construct street right of way improvements along Lime Kiln Road be waived, and the Planning Commission is persuaded that a deferral would be appropriate until such time the Board of Commissioners deems improvements necessary. The applicant is here tonight and sorry, the recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, Township staff recommends preliminary final approval for Parkland School District New Operations Center Phase 3 Plan 2024-101. The Board of Commissioners deadline to act on this plan is November 14th, 2024. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, please ask our township engineer, Tony Tallarida, again for any engineering comments for the board. Um, this is phase three, which is just a building expansion, about 12,000 uh, additional square foot to a site that was approved and being built. Um, our main concern was the additional traffic generated by this building. Um, an analysis was done not only at 309 and Lime Kiln, but also at Lime Kiln and Stadium. Um, they were close to meeting left turn lane warrants. This just put them over left turn lane warrants. What that means is based upon just generic volumes, there's a potential for needing left turn lane. They did an analysis of the intersection to show that it still meets level service A. So at this point, uh, we agree with the condition to allow the township to continue monitoring this. And if at any time there's problems, they can go back to the school district. The other thing is, um, as some people know, there was there's a few master plans in the works for this school. Now we moving forward, they probably will be analyzing this intersection as well as all the surrounding intersections in the near future. And there'll probably be major changes. Well, there'll be change, potential changes to these intersections. So at this point, we'll feel comfortable finalizing this building, knowing that there'll be more development coming. Very good. Thank you, Tony. And I'll call on our township solicitor, Attorney Zader. Any comment on this plan? Mr. Kelly, I have no legal concerns with the board uh, granting approval if you would see fit to do that this evening. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll open it up to the board for any comments or questions on this plan. So they are required to have 100 parking spots and they're only going to have how many? They're required to have 194. 194. And the zoning hearing board granted relief to have 94 spaces. 
And Tom, is there, Can how will the township monitor? I spoke with the zoning officer, um, Laura Harrier, and she indicated the best method of doing that would be to simply request a current employee list from the, from the school district of all those employees that will be utilizing that building and then, and then reconciling that with the expected uh, visitor uh, tally on a regular basis. And then also con to continue to monitor to see if there's any like identifying factors for problems. For example, um, if uh, people are parking along areas they shouldn't be parking or you know crossing the road from from um, from the other building across the street right like those things of that nature so there's ways to do it and then i think the, the zoning decision was was clear that if it's determined that uh there are, there's not sufficient parking they would have you know we, we as the township have the right to go back on that very good thank you and we asked the applicant uh with this building you took up a lot of your parking for the football games so what is your plan to accommodate those lost spots for those Friday nights where you get eight to 10,000 people in the stadium? Uh, yeah, I think we discussed this a bit when we were here last year with the original application um, that this, this will be used and we have sidewalks that and, and crosswalks that are in there. So this, this lot will be used on Friday nights for, for the parking for the, for the stadium as well. Well, I understand that, but it used to be a field that people parked in, the whole field. So you lost all of those spots. So where are those cars going to go? Well, I mean, there's still there's still going to be 96 spots on on the, you know, there's going to be, I believe, 76 spots that are permanently striped. And then we have um, additional spots that can be used as overflow, which during the during the workday can be used for uh, tractor trailers and, and uh, loading and things of that nature. But then on football nights they can be that can that lower lot can be parked as well that's my concern because you you took a lot which i understand you, you know those five fridays that you you fill up the football stadium there's a lot of cars there and you took a lot of spots away from where people were parking more than 93 that you're providing my concern is where are those people going to park and is it going to end up being parked along Lime Kiln and walking up up the street to go to the stadium or will they, the overflow end up going out on Orfield Road creating a bitter, bigger hazard because there's no sidewalks on uh, the Terrace Road or, or Stadium Drive, whatever the that connecting road is to Stadium Road and Orfield Road. Like what it just doesn't sound like you have a plan to, to deal with parking. It's going to be a Free for all, especially, and then those people that come from out of town that aren't familiar with it could cause us a bigger problem on those Friday nights. We, we understand that, and the school district has actually directed us to look to see if there's a way to increase the amount of parking on the site. Um, we're, we're, we're studying that right now, but we, we feel sorry, that. I didn't, I didn't catch your name. Scott McMacken with Cowan Associates. I'm the, the civil engineer for the oh, project. I, didn't, no, I thought you were a parking employee. I'm sorry. Um, so you would understand that Friday night football games uh, in the field where you built the building becomes a, a prime parking spot for those games. And then now that you've taken away a couple hundred spots, like those cars still need to park somewhere. And my concern is where are they going to go and how are they safely going to make it up to the stadium is, is what I – it doesn't sound like there's. it's going to be a free-for-all, and I've seen bad things happen when out-of-towners come and park and want to get to the stadium and cause accidents. Yeah, understood. And, and you know, I'm not 100% sure how many parking spaces were, you know, taken up in the grass. Maybe more than the 96 are being proposed now. Um, we are working currently. There's a, a large PPNL right-of-way that runs through the property. That was uh, some of the original limitations for how much we could put on that uh, on that parcel formally. Uh, we are currently working to see if we can get some uh, work work with them to maybe get some additional parking underneath there the right away to see if they would permit that and we can possibly get some more parking on, on that lot. Um, but as it stands now, you know it uh, you know we're, we're maximizing what we can. 
and, and the limits of the ordinance um, to, to provide as much parking as possible for not only, you know, the use during the, the work week, but to try to maximize the, the parking for, for those football Fridays. Because, you know, that was a discussion when we first started designing the project and when we came in with the original project back in 2000. Two and three, we you know we we had discussions about trying to maximize that parking as well. Okay, Tom, I don't know if this would fall under a special event plan, but uh, with the size of the number of people that are attending football games, that parking and access to the stadium is a concern, and maybe we should proactively meet with emergency services, the, te the school district, and see how we can make sure that we avoid any potential problems. Because uh, like I said, I, I have firsthand seen bad outcomes from people coming from out of town to get to the game that caused problems. Yeah, I've seen a kid get hit, hit there. In the Chris, if, can you guys hear me? We can, Commissioner Roth. Uh, yeah, if I just want to sort of um, build on to what Chris is saying, I, I when the district came before the board last year, um, I had I, I was very skeptical um, in, in the same way I think that you are of of the ability to fit all those cars up there on a Friday night. Um, I, I really doubted that it would happen, and I think it could be disastrous. Um, I will say that having attended most of the home games this past season, um, the district did a pretty good job. Uh, moving all the buses out of the way uh, across Stadium Drive, up by the bus garage, um, they they made a lot of parking. Um, now I I hope that continues um, even after this project's done because I know they had that whole area fenced off. Um, I, I think in the long term parking is going to be a, a big problem up there, and I I still have the same concerns that Chris that you have. Um, but I will say that at least for the past season, the, the district did a pretty good job of. Uh, making sure you know, there was enough parking and they had a lot of uh, parking attendants there helping to guide people. So I, I hope that would continue on the part of the school district at least this season and hopefully well into the future because otherwise it, it could be a serious problem. Hi, Arthur Oaks, uh, Director of Operations for Parkland. So yes, that will continue. That is our, our practice and procedure to help offset some of the parking that we know we're losing. As Scott mentioned, we are trying to add that additional parking with underneath of the power lines. And also, uh, I think Tony mentioned about the master plans, all the things we're trying to do. We're trying to develop that site a little more. We're trying to purchase a property, you know, the old quarry site up there. So all of that would be to move the bus parking up there that would open up more parking within the parking lot. We call it Vision 2030 in Parkland. It's out there in the public. It's been at the board meetings. We don't have the plans yet to show you, but Within these next couple of years, we think that we're going to address all of those situations and those issues. Um, in the short term, we're going to do all of the things uh, that he mentioned about moving the buses, trying to open it up as much as we can, keep that parking lot open as much as we can. This is coming online, so this is really our first season with that fully under construction. So we're going to have more people on staff. We're going to get all the buses up out of, the, uh, out of that area. If we have to park them in another building, that's what we'll do. Whatever we have to do to make it work. Um, we have a safety and security, Dr. Naracco, on, on staff who works very well with the, the township police. So whatever we have to do, we're going to figure it out. Yeah, I'd just like to see us kind of be proactive on the plans. Or like when, if Easton comes to town and Nazareth comes to town, there's 10,000 people in the stadium. Yeah, Nazareth is our, usually our biggest. Yeah. And we can get in touch with you, Tom. And yeah, I think that would be appropriate. I and mean, that would be the, the uh, with Tony Naracco would mm -hmm. be the primary contact for that. Um, we can arrange for that in, in emergency management and public works and police, and we, we can uh, review everything. Just so we have a plan to be, like I said, just. Yeah, I think, I think the, the event itself falls under their, their use. Um, so, you know, we'd we be, be able to work through them at, like we do uh, with other issues. Yeah, I don't mean to pirate the talk of. Well, no, it's spaces. very good discussion, and, and thank you. Commissioner Peichel for bringing that up, and thank you to to Tom and to the district to partner together to get a plan yeah. for safety in the Yeah, area. it's a partnership. Absolutely. Thank you. So other comments on this plan? I do have a quick comment. Um, 
I'm also thinking along the night, uh, the nights that there are football games and knowing how crowded it is and having three children gone through uh, Parkland High School. Um, I understand that you don't want any traffic going left on Lime Kiln, mm -hmm. going east, I guess that would be, right? Um, I have a concern with West on Lime Kiln because I know how those kids spill out of the stadium and they want to go to Burger King and they meet and they hang out with their friends and that's great. Mm -hmm. But I want, in time, I, I want it to be uh, thought about like a, a safe sidewalk, a safe area for these kids to, to go down and trickle across to that restaurant. And I understand that with the improvements of that intersection, mm -hmm. that, that will all be tying in, but I just want to make sure that you knew that I had that concern. Yeah, I, I think that'll actually be in the next thing that we bring forward when we talk about Orfield as a school as a whole. You're yeah, actively yeah. putting sidewalks on the north side of Lime Kiln below the lower lot there? And who knows what they're going to require us. I know we met with PennDOT about those improvements, so whatever's going to be required, we're going to have to do. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, That's you're welcome. But we do think that the new operations building with those sidewalks up that road are going to help a lot as well. That, that makes a big improvement. So. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Commissioner Roth, did you have any comments on the plan? Uh, nothing further, no. Very good. Is there any public comment? Is there anyone online with any comment? Okay. So hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to adopt said resolution approving and adopting revise? I'm sorry, motion to adopt said resolution Granting preliminary final approval to plan Parkland Operations Center. Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Good luck with your plan. Agenda item 8C, we have a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of South Whitehall Township, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, approving and adopting revised bylaws of the Public Safety Commission. Tom, if you would please present. Thank you. So during the Monday, July 1st, uh, Public Safety Commission meeting, possible revisions to the adopted bylaws of the Public Safety Commission were discussed by the Commission members. Um, so the two possible revisions that were discussed were uh, under Article uh, 5, Membership Section 1, so to remove the voting of authority of the Parkland School District Superintendent pursuant to a request made by the Parkland School District. I, I want to make sure, sure we clarify that. Um, so this request was subsequently, subsequently discussed with the Parkland School District attendant, Dr. Madsen, and is confirmed that the sentiment of Parkland School District is that the amend amendment would be appropriate to remove the voting authority of the superintendent. Uh, the superintendent or his or her designee should still be a member of the Public Safety Commission and have the right to participate in any discussions. Uh, for general information, Tony Noreco is the Director of, of District Safety and Security for Parkland School Distri District, has been attending Public Safety Commission meetings uh, on behalf of the district on a regular basis. The second amendment was to Article 4, Policy Section 3, which requires the Public Safety Commission members to render recommendations concerning subdivision plans before the commission pursuant to a 51 percent affirmative vote. Uh, the Public Safety Commission had discussed providing a list of all discussed comments uh, regardless of whether a majority vote was approved. Uh, so upon review of that suggestion uh, with township staff, it was noted that the revision would essentially require the remittance of any and all comments received from the members without receiving an overall recommendation as a whole. Um, the recommendation from staff is to keep the language of the bylaws as currently drafted and then specifically list the need uh, memorialized within the motion of recommendation on each subdivision with all uh, comments that the group as a whole decides to incorporate uh, for the consideration of, of, of other uh, agencies, including the Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners. So at this past Monday night's um, August 5th Public Safety Commission, that omission of one of their recommended uh, revisions was discussed and it was agreed upon that that is the appropriate course of action. Um, the, the situation is that um, the comments are fluid during the meeting, but, you know, as a whole, the, the motion should en encapsulate what the overall recommendations are. So meaning you want to have a fluid discussion, but then make sure you're, you're, 
you're incorporating the most important comments that, that the group decides on. So, so no recommended revisions there. Also, this past Monday night, it was discussed that um, uh, whether the term for at-large members should be uh, amended from two years to four years. Um, so to clarify, there's permanent members of the Public Safety Commission. Um, so there's, and then there's four at-large members. So there's eight permanent, and um, those include the chief of the four fire company service serving the township, chief executive officer of the ambulance corps serving the township, chief of police, emergency manager director, and the superintendent of Parkland School District. So the four at-large would, if you were inclined to change the term, could be done uh, via this bylaws res revision as well. So you'd go from two to four. Very good, Tom. Thank you for presenting. I will open it up to the board for any comments or questions on the agenda item. For the board's consideration, is there agreement to have the at-large members of a two or a four-year term? Is there a preference of the board? I prefer four. I think four is appropriate, the amount of time that it takes for this board to review, interview members. It would be consistent with all of our other advisory boards. That's typically what our terms are. I would agree that it would be four also being consistent with our other boards. And would they be staggered? They're currently staggered because uh, you, you have to stagger them when they're appointed. So by adding two more years to already two, you you would just be it's already built keeping in. the built-in staggering. Okay, perfect. So the at-large members, I'm wondering, are they expired terms at this point? Some are, some are not. Okay, so the ones that are expired would be going through our process to fill out Correct. an intent to... And we've sent out the application that's required to all the expired terms. Okay, so the board will be reviewing those at some point in the future. Very good. Um, I'm in agreement. I appreciate um, you bringing this to the board to update the bylaws um, and to have a concise message uh, of the items discussed for land development brought to both the Pub uh, Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners. So I'd be in agreement with this as well. Is there any other comment or questions at this time from the board? Commissioner Roth, do you have any comment? Uh, nothing further. I'm fine with four years as well. Very good. Is there any public comment on this agenda item? Is there anything online, Chris? Okay, hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to adopt said resolution approving and adopting revised bylaws of the Public Safety Commission? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And also have a second motion confirming the revision to uh, to article uh five section one for the term for two years to four to incorporate that into the resolution do we have a motion to incorporate that into the resolution a motion yeah. all in favor aye. aye aye motion carries five to zero thank you and item 9a we have a motion to proceed with release of security for ridge farms Phase 1A Improvement Security Release Certification Number 7. Tom, if you'd present. <clears throat> okay, so um, for Phase 1A, this is uh, the number 7 of the certification. So if the board will recall, um, this project was originally approved at the April 6, 2022 meeting through a resolution 2022-48. Uh, over 3 million uh, in security improvements were were uh, secured via letter of credit, a letter of credit. Um, the plan was recorded on July 5th, 2023 and construction started shortly thereafter. Words. At this time, the applicant has completed more of the required public infrastructure improvements and has requested a seventh release of security for those improvements. Uh, the township engineer's office and staff conducted inspections to confirm and document the construction of the required improvements and are authorizing the release of 317,900 
and eighty-five dollars and forty-two cents. This would bring the value of the total amount of security release is two million three hundred seventy-five thousand two hundred and seventy dollars and ten cents. Um, it is important to note that the township has elected to impose an additional ten percent security amount, um, as permitted by the municipality's planning code. The uh, detailed documentation supporting the release was uh, provided to to the board members and is included in the packet. So, uh, unless there's any questions, we I would seek a motion to authorize the township manager to sign the security release letter to the financial institution and confirm the additional 10% security amount requested by the township. Thank you, Tom. Um, and I will ask our township engineer if you have any comments on this release. Uh, no, uh, minor, there's like $1.2 million still being held by the township. Uh, we know this probably, there will probably be only one or two of these left because we never re release more than what's required for maintenance, which is over 200,000. So you might only get one or two of these left until they kind of draw down to that final close. So uh, as we have been through pretty standard forms. Very good, thank you. Thanks. Are there any board comments or questions? Is there any public comment? Anything online? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion? to authorize a township manager to sign the security release letter to the financial institution and confirm the additional 10% security amount requested by the township. So moved. I'll second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Then item 9B, we have a motion authorizing township manager to write off fees in the amount of $6,514.15 in reference to Hamilton Animal Care, 4570 West Tillman Street. And Tom, if you'd present. Yes, uh, the property located at 4570 West Tillman Street was um, the construction of a 9,600 square foot two-story veterinarian facility, uh, which consisted of an 8,157 square foot office and a uh, 1,443 square foot general retail space, as well as a 46 space parking lot on the parcel. The project was approved by the board on um, April 5th, 2017, the final certificate of occupancy was issued April 22nd, 2019. The 18 month maintenance period officially ended March 31st, 2022. November of 2022 closeout procedure was started. There, there still remains a shortfall of $6,514.15 in the escrow account. Uh, the township manager ordinance allows write-offs of $2,500. Uh, this exceeds that amount. The 6514 15 cent figure represents a good faith attempt of the township to reconcile amounts that were billed to the applicant and developer for this project as a result of the necessary relocation of uh, PPL utility poles that was uh, due to the approval of another subdivision, KRE, that uh, required sidewalk infrastructure improvement. So that's that's the reason this this is being requested to be written off. Um, otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't be a request before you. Very good. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any board comments or questions on this motion? Is there any public comment or anyone online? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to approve said motion? Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Aye. Roth? Very good. Thank you. Motion carries five to zero. Then item 9C, we have a motion to proceed with purchase of entry exit gate for the police public works area. Interim Chief Brown, if you'd please present. Yes, the, the police department and township administration are requesting to upgrade the entry exit gate utilized to gain access to the police department and public works. The gate no longer functions properly and enables anyone to drive down to the back of the township building where township employees are getting in and out of vehicles or working in the public works garage. Uh, recently, we had two incidents where motors drove down there. Um, they, were, they were arguing. They got out of the car. Um, this is identified safety concern as, as public works personnel are often working with the garage doors open in the summertime, um, exposing them to, to what could be a dangerous scenario if no police officers are available on site and an argument escalates. The original gate was supposed to prevent unauthorized persons from entering the municipal complex unless they were let inside. Uh, the original motor of the gate was not correctly specified, thereby resulting in frequent interruptions of service. The cost of this gate includes all material and labor to install it. The quotation provided 
provided utilizes CoStar's co contract pricing as the, uh, the procurement method. Uh, during the course of the 2024 budget adoption, the Board of Commissioners previously approved an interfund transfer in the amount of $673,606.27 out of the American Rescue Plan you know, Act, ARPA fund, to the Capital Reserve Fund to help support the anticipated cost of new body camera in-car systems, a project which resulted in a lower budgeted amount. The township is not exceeding the total line amount budgeted. The existing budgeted capital refunds or funds are would be shifted as summarized below. For the Capital Reserve Fund, uh, 40761, the body worn and in-car camera systems, uh, there's $964,649 and 97 cents. Uh, the cost of the gate would be $4,540, thereby reducing it to 924,109.97. Then a new line item would be created, 40733, entitled Campus Renovation Capital Projects. This light item will help account for all future facility upgrades at the Township Municipal Campus. Because this upgrade will serve the entire Township Municipal Campus, this capital expense will be booked to administration. Uh, the Township must encumber all the remaining ARPA funds by the end of 2024 fiscal year, specifically December 31st, 2024. We are requesting the Board of Commissioners approve the entry exit gate and the corresponding transfer motion as above, as identified above. The total capital cost of $40,540 or $540 would be encumbered as part of the ARPA funds that were originally designated to the police department. Very good. Thank you for presenting and thank you for including the um, bid specs for the board's review. Does the board have any comments or questions on this action? So you, you mentioned that incident. And I'm just thinking if somebody has a road raid incident, drunk drive the police department, it, they won't be able to get to the police department or safe area, kind of out left or on their own. There's no way for you to know that somebody's at the gate wanting to come in or seeking approval to come in in such a case, is there? There's a call box there. Is there? Yes. Who answers it? It's There's one up here and there's one downstairs in our... Um, office area. So there is a way to notify that they're having, a, there's an issue going on. That's correct. But there's not a call box at the gate. Not at the gate. Like the gate itself wouldn't have a call box. There's a, there's a video phone there. There is? Yeah. Yes, there's a button that they have to push. Like when we get salt deliveries in public works, they push a button. The receptionist upstairs and the receptionist in police, they can pick up a phone, see in a camera exactly who's there, then they can push a button and open the gate. But if it's after hours? If it's after hours, if no one's at those phones, no, it's not monitored. It doesn't but go they to can dispatch. Come up, right. They can come upstairs in the They could come up foyer, to the, and there's a They could come up to the foyer and push the emergency button then, yes. Very good. Any other questions? Any public comment? Or anyone online with any questions? I, I had a question. This is Mark Granahan. I just wondered why why there's a gate there to begin with. The gate was originally on the campus plan when they renovated it. Um, it was to make sure that there was a safe working environment down around the back and to filter everybody who's visiting the township building through one entrance. So everybody knew that there would be um, people coming and going down around the back. Uh, officers are getting into their cars, getting out of their cars. Um, like I said, there's public works employees working there as well. Uh, it just helps with the, the vehicle traffic, preventing it from going back there. So, so I guess the your your summary is that you're concerned that there might be people going back in the area where the police force is parking is that's correct and there's also uh township employees back there as well i think the township employees i mean i have a, a service building next to my my home but there's there's no gate on that township building um, 
but if if the police officers need protection, um, which is what I think you're saying, maybe it's a worthwhile expense. Um, otherwise, to me, it seems like you would you'd want it's a public area. You'd expect to have public access. But if if what you're saying is the police officers need protection, um, well, it's a police officer is going to come out um, as it stands right now. We've come out several times and there's people just standing there. Um, and, you know, we're not we're not expecting that. It's kind of our area that's like a safe area for us. So having people drive down there and uh, number one, they can't they can't get hold of us if we're inside the building because there's no way for them to alert us that they're here when the gates are up um, and people walk down there too as well. So it's the gates were originally intended to not have vehicle traffic go down there unless the township was aware of it. Okay, um, thank, thank you for, uh, for your response. Thank you. Um, I, I just had one follow up question just on the concept and idea of people looking for the police department. I know that we've had, I've witnessed myself, residents or visitors looking for the police, um, really not quite sure which door to go in up here. Is that something the township can explore if there is better signage that we might install to direct? Yeah, I've talked with Tom already. We, we're going to come up with a, some kind of different signage that's more direct. Um, as soon as you walk through the door, potentially you could see the sign for police to go downstairs. And even coming up this driveway off of Ridgeview, mm -hmm. if someone's, you know, put their GPS in, it brings Correct. you to this campus, but it doesn't direct them necessarily to the front entrance, either during the day when receptionists can help or in the evening when there's a call button. So if that's something the township could. Yeah, we, we Tom and I already started exploring that. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful just overall. Any other public comment online or in-house? No other commissioner comments? Do I have a motion to approve the entry exit gate for a total cost of $40,540, which would be encumbered as part of the ARPA funds that were designated to the police department? Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Agenda item 9D, we have a motion to award contract for the municipal campus sidewalk project. And I'll ask our director of operations, Herb Bender, to please present. Thank you. On July 19th, uh, three bids were open publicly for the municipal campus sidewalk project. This bid was advertised once in local publication as required by law. 34 potential bidders downloaded and received bid documents from the Penn Bid website. A bid tabulation is attached for your reference. Uh, the campus sidewalk projects was previously approved by the board to be advertised at, at the June 19, 2024 meeting. The construction of the sidewalk in front of the municipal campus will connect to the existing sidewalk in front of Attorney Zader's office. This sidewalk will be ADA compliant and will include an Atlanta bus stop and a connection to the Parkland Library. Uh, the action we are requesting is township staff respectfully request the Board of Commissioners to award the contract for the campus sidewalk to Construction Master Services, LLC for $209,827.50, which is under budget and allows the engineering costs to be shifted from the general fund and expense to the capital line. Uh, this project was budgeted for $294,000. $124.80. Thank you, Herb. I want to also thank uh, Donna Zachro Lagonia for compiling the tabulations for the bids uh, for the board's review. What is the timeline once this is awarded? Uh, we'll have to work with the contractor, but when we did have the pre construction meeting, we were telling them we wanted to get them in here as quick as possible and try to get this wrapped up by the end of October. Oh, very nice. Thank you. It's a great plan. Um, I think it will make a nice uh, continuous sidewalk out here for, for 
residents and visitors to the municipal campus library and all the way up to the bus stop. Are there any board comments or questions on this? Any public comment? Anything online? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to award said contract to for the municipal campus sidewalk project to construction masters LLC in the amount of two hundred nine thousand eight hundred twenty seven dollars and fifty cents? I'll sec motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Then item 9E, we have a motion granting permission for Langen Engineering to proceed with sanitary sewer manhole survey. And Herb, if you'd present again. Thank you. Public Works Utility Division is respectfully asking permission to proceed with Langen Engineering to complete some additional work so we can obtain the correct information that is needed for the Act 537 plan checklist for Kleins Island. Uh, this work would include locations of the 246 manholes based on GIFs observations by their survey crews using submeter sub accuracy equipment. Their crew will open each manhole and measure the visible invert information. The field survey data will be directly added into the ARC GIS field map that we have for the township. So this data will be readily available in the township GIS. We are requesting a motion by the Board of Commissioners to approve Langen Engineering to proceed with the sanitary sewer manhole survey. Uh, this, there, in the capital budget, we did have $50,000 for sewer planning documents. So that's where this 23,500 would come out of. Very good, thank you, Herb. Are there any board questions or comments? Any public comments? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to approve said motion? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Then item 10, correspondence and information, boards and commissions. Tom, if you'd please review our upcoming meetings. Thank you. Upcoming meetings are as follows. Uh, tomorrow night, August 8th, Thursday, 7 p.m., Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Wednesday, August 14th, 10 a.m., Civil Service Commission meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Friday, August 16th, 7 p.m., movie in the parks at Springhouse West Park. Uh, Wednesday, August 21st, 7 p.m., is, is a Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, details are all posted on the Township website calendar. Good, thank you. Agenda item 11, direction and discussion. Um, agenda item A, we have hometown heroes policy. Um, if you would present. Yes. Um, so pursuant to a previous suggestion rem rendered by um, the Board of Commissioners and closed in this packet is um, uh, draft materials, including a pro program summary and application delineating a proposed uh, 2025 South Waddell Township Hometown Heroes Program. So to give a high level uh, summary of the proposed key aspects of the program, uh, they are identified as follows. Uh, so to qualify, a uh, veteran, either living or deceased, must have lived in South Whitehall Township at some point in their life. Actually, before I get into all that, let me explain what Hope, Hometown Heroes is. Um, so it's a banner program in which you are um, honoring um, uh, veterans that um, you're essentially creating a living tribute for the, for the community to honor those members who have served as veterans of the United States Arm, Armed Forces, including all branches. So the banner honors a specific South Whitehall Township service member who has a current or former connection to South Whitehall Township. So um, the banner would feature the service member's name, rank and title, branch of armed service, era of service, for example, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, any of the, uh, the uh, um, assignments like the global war on terror, uh, service dates, prestigious medals, photo, and is sponsored by section to include the sponsor's name. Uh, the banner would measure 24 inches by 48 inches printed on both sides on heavy duty vinyl. Um, so uh, registration as proposed would open on November 8th, 2024 for the South Whitehall Township Hometown Heroes Banner Program. Application for banners will be accepted through March 28th, 2025. Um, new banners will be installed in the spring of 25 in advance of Memorial Day. Um, as indicated, um, the banner would feature the service members relevant information. 
uh, would be on this would be displayed on township owned lamp poles at the South Whitehall Township Municipal Building for this round. Um, and there would be 12 banner pole locations available for the program. The intent would be to display the banners for at least a two year period. But uh, after two years, we will assess the condition of the banners and determine when they should be replaced. And then the banners would be offered to the sponsors as a keepsake. If this sponsor does not collect the banner, it would become the property of the township. So just to clarify, the, the banners are usually, they, they have about a two year lifespan. Um, the banner displays would be available on a first come first serve basis and will be available until all spots are filled. The selection of the pole in which the banner will be placed is at the discretion of the township. The suggested price of the banner to recoup all associated expenses is $200. And as indicated, um, the, the intent would be to display them from Memorial Day through to Veterans Day in observance of all military branch established dates. And then the, also the intent would be to remove and store the, in the same period in the following year, which time they will be displayed in the same manner. And that way the banners aren't out in the, uh, the brunt of the winter season. Um, so following any dis discussion and or questions, uh, administrative personnel, we are seeking confirmation that the parameters and criteria sent forth in the program are acceptable. Once confirmed, I believe we can then proceed with the logistical and administrative requirements of the program. Um, thank you. And thank you for bringing this to the board for consideration. It's certainly something uh, this board has discussed uh, various times over the last several years, and it's really uh, wonderful to see it come to fruition. Um, I'm in agreement with the parameters that you have delineated in the memo. Um, I think it would be very honoring to have the banners um, displayed from Memorial Day to veterans, and I look forward to proceeding with this program. But I will open it up to the board for comments uh, on this very honoring program. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, can you put in your 2025 work list how to get them on more polls? Because I think the 12 are going to sell out on November 8th. Yeah, we're, we're going to look into that. It's it's challenging along our corridors because the utility poles are not consistent in our township. Um, we could look at parks. We can we can certainly explore that. And I, and I agree. I think it's going to be a popular program. Um, so we will certainly put that into our, our, our longer term work plan or 25 work plan. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I'm in favor of this program, and I remember uh, Jeff Marshall at one of our landscapes meetings saying that it depicts what's important to us, and this is very important to all of us. Um, I also, I don't know if, this is just a comment, in my own hometown of Northampton, they uh, have implemented this program, and uh, I've noticed that the names of the veterans sometimes are situated kind of close to their homes. Like it's on Main Street, it's 4th Street, there's North Caddy, um, and some of the, um, the vets, you are, you're able to do that if they lived on, say, 9th Street. The pole on 9th Street has their image. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a possibility. I know it's a little more um, uh, obstacle here, but just having them closer to where they live, that might be a are you, for this round, are you saying that, or for an, a subsequent round? Subsequent round. Subsequent round. We're very yes. Limited with what we have initially. So yes. Going forward. Well, if we were to explore parks, that might make sense to try to find down the road a park that may be near a particular residence. That's a very good. Discussion. Yeah, we can certainly ex definitely explore that. Thank you. Any other comments from the board, Commissioner Roth? Did you have any comments? Uh, just adding on to what's already been said, uh, Tom, thanks for, for putting this together. I know we're in a, a, a more challenging situation given that we don't we don't have a main street uh, necessarily in, in South Whitehall. Um, so I think what, what you've come up with is a, a good pilot program, and I'll be interested to see uh, where the, the program goes. But, but as always, it's a, it's a great way to honor those uh, who have served in our community. So thank you. Very good. Thank you all for your comments. And Tom, I think you have what you need from the board. I do. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 11B, South Whitehall Landscapes Plan, Open Space, Historical, Agricultural and Natural Resource Preservation Plan, 
comment period update. And I'll ask Chris Stroller, our long range planner, to please present. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Um, at the July 17th meeting, we talked about the draft landscapes plan and releasing that to the Board of Commissioners and appropriate boards for comment period. Um, thank you to the board members that have submitted comments and, and feedback already. Um, I just wanted to tonight kind of check in, um, let you know how that's been going. We've received so far just good comments, um, just kind of more um, clarification on a couple of items and some things that we're incorporating already into the draft, but nothing really substantial. Um, so at the previous meeting, we talked about uh, releasing the plan for about a two week public comment period. Uh, so just wanted to check in and confirm that we're ready to release the plan for public comment um, starting tomorrow, running until August 21st. The reason for the August 21st um, uh, deadline would be to check in at the Board of Commissioners meeting then to let you know how the comments are um, uh, potentially reflecting of the plan so far. We haven't had um, any questions about it or any comments about it, but we'll see from there. And then just as an update to the timeline, at that 21st meeting, we would uh, look to the board for a motion to send the uh, kind of the final draft plan, barring any substantial comments to the Environmental Advisory Council. And then the EAC would review it that Monday um, and make a recommendation back to um, the board to have the final plan go to the Planning Commission at their September 12th meeting. And from there, we would have a formal recommendation from the Planning Commission um, for a potential adoption date at the Board of Commissioners meeting on September 18th. Excellent. Um, I am very much in agreement with your timeline. Thank you for presenting it for review tonight. Um, the plan is fantastic. It's just a culmination of so much work and input by so many people over a great deal of time. So thank you to all. And um, I'm very much looking forward to moving this forward. Thank you. Um, other board comments or questions on the timeline? Is everybody in agreement with the dates? Commissioner Roth, are you in agreement with the timeline as presented? Absolutely. I, I think we're uh, I think we're in a good position to move this forward. So yeah, I'm I'm in favor of the timeline. Excellent. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. We have no old business tonight. Again, courtesy of the floor, agenda item 13. Any member of the public would like to address the board on any non-agenda? Yes, sir. Run up to the microphone and just give us your name and address for the record. Uh, Sam Sackle, 1898 Blue Barn Road. Um, just to uh, circle back to uh, Janet Moore's issue, she started off the courtesy of the floor. Uh, if I understood it right, she has to go back to the uh, zoning hearing board to appeal. No, the Board of Commissioners. Well, Tom, go ahead. Well, if she was an interested party, she has that right to appeal on her own. Um, the board would have nothing to do with that. However, um, the township is always an interested party to any zoning hearing board appeal. So what we will do is look to see whether there's any merit to the township um, appealing that decision. So after consulting with staff and with the solicitor, um, it may it may be warranted, it may not be warranted. Uh, we don't know enough information at this time. So we will then come back with a recommendation. Okay, and, and you will notify her of the your position on it? Well, I, I will, we can notify her once the board has confirmed their position. It's not a decision that staff can make ourselves, but we will we will um, provide a recommendation to the board in a, in a timely manner. Um, and then once the outcome is confirmed, I, then, then- I was we, at the meeting and, um, being as the lot is 60% deficient from 7,200 square feet to 2,500, I, I think that was a non-starter. So I don't, I don't even know how they got past that part and okayed it. We but will I'll, look at the facts. I'll let her know hand. that you guys are going to look it over. I'm we sure are going to appreciate that. Look at the facts at hand and then and the, do our due diligence and then report back to the board. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment, sir. Any other member of the public? Is there anyone online who would like to address the board under courtesy of the floor? There is not. I need a motion to authorize payment of invoices and disbursements. So moved. 
Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. We have no executive session to schedule this evening. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.